all right we're back to spraying today it's a little breezy but i don't think it's anything that's going to shut me down um obviously got the truck in the nurse tank here someone's coming to get me to take me back to get the tractor um i finally got corn coming up here after the rain hopefully it all spikes through I came out and checked Wednesday, I think, to see if any of it had swelled up, and it had, so. Well, there should be a dang seed around here somewhere. Well, come on. Oop, there we go. Yep, that one's... Well, it was growing until I broke it. So hopefully, by, like, Sunday time frame, you'll be able to come out here and see Rose. Well, that's interesting. It, like, came out of the ground and then started growing. Oh, there's been something out here. Digging for seed. Row, row, find me a row. There's a row. <laughs> We need to start getting some heat again. It's been cold, which has been good on one hand because it's let all the moisture soak in, but it hasn't really done much good for getting things kicked in the ass to get them rolling since we got that rain. But on the other hand, that one's going. tells you how long it took the water to get down or moisture to get down to that seed if see it rained what tuesday rain tuesday this is friday and it's stuff just now starting to sprout but it is sprouting so that's good but the problem we run into now yep he's going and the problem we run into now is you've got 100, 100 plus day corn um because there's guys that were playing longer season than i was that is coming out of the ground in the middle of june like it was just planted so now the fight is going to be he just came out of the ground probably yesterday same thing there um now our fight is going to be that We've got all this full season corn coming like it got planted late. He's sending out a spike. I think we're going to be okay. Um, we got all this full season corn coming up. It's two weeks behind, three, two and a half, three weeks behind coming out of the ground. That one's buggy whipped. Um, so now you've got this full season corn that's got to try to make up for lost time it's probably not going to be able to do it especially if we continue to get sparse rainfall and on the back end at the best harvest is going to start really late at least for corn beans i'm not worried about beans are indeterminate they will grow up to the point where mother nature tells them it's time to die and then they die and beans will be fine um yield yield might drop a little bit but it shouldn't be too bad as long as everything comes up good but corn has to reach maturity it's it's determinate growth it's going to grow x number of days no matter what changes as far as weather pattern 
so if we get an early frost and it hasn't reached full maturity yet and we get a, and we get a killing frost that's going to kill the plant before the grain is fully matured and then that kills your test weight kills grain quality whole nine yards so that's the issue that we are going to be fighting now is all the trouble we're going to see on the back end of this that one's going i think we're going to be we're at least going to have a stand of corn out here from what i'm seeing it's going to be uneven and that's that's the other thing is when you start getting corn that's well that right there what do we got we got the cot or the thumb leaf is one two three full collars so he's v3 so we got v3 to just coming out of the ground right there all within what five feet so that affects pollination that it affects plant competition because the taller plants are going to start sapping moisture and nutrients away from the smaller plant that is just basically on corn the damage is done basically all we could do at this point is do damage control there's really no i don't want to say there's no coming back from this that's not the best way to put it but the damage has been done there's no there's no way to fix this all we can do is manage what we have so and as you can see i've got at first i thought that was common ragweed but now i'm thinking it's wild carrot i'm pretty sure it's wild carrot But that's basically what all this is so it shouldn't be too hard to kill i'm glad it's not it's definitely not ragweed now they look at it that's that's ragweed but this is wild carrot which is what 99 percent of all the green is so there's this will be fairly easy to kill so oh is that my ride okay okay i'm gonna go get the tractor and we'll meet you back here to field okay let's do a little mixing shall we I do think, even though it's not too windy, it does gust every once in a while, so I think I'm going to drop my booms one notch, just for safe measure. Sorry for the close-ups of the hose. Definitely need to do what the one guy said, take the car apart and hit the halves with stones and make them or make them flat again. I'm pretty sure that's the problem. much stuff. Now it's going to 
going to be difficult. I had to I cleaned the strainer out before I came over here since it's been sitting and I probably got an air bubble in it. got it i'll never understand this thing sometimes or usually it'll prime up just fine but every once in a while if you lose prime it wants to be a booger today was one of those times things about this is you crack that valve just a hair and it turns into like a power washer and you can blow everything off the one thing I do need to do to this for next year is come over on this side opposite of the motor and mount like a 20 gallon 30 gallon whatever I can find tank over here that's just for clean water for a rinse tank so you can wash your hands and stuff something that needs to get on the list start on the backfield first this field I'm not looking forward to because since there's obviously no cornrows to see yet hopefully I can see enough of the planter tracks to be able to count my rows otherwise I'm going to have a bunch of skips and overlap which I prefer to have skips rather than overlap try it but I think mother nature just shut me down for the day you get up here on the high ground it's blowing hard enough to whip the trees I got a feeling we're going to be drifting pretty good so I'll go here a little bit and we'll see but I don't have high hopes something. Well, that blows. He 
you get down there in the hollow where the truck is and it's not blowing like this but if i can watch the drift blowing that bad from the tractor and coming back across the field it's probably gonna blow right in my fate while it'd be blowing right on the back of my head but Maybe give it a couple hours and the wind will die down and I can at least come back here and get this sprayed. But if not, I guess we'll be over here first thing in the morning. So, either way it plays out, I guess we'll see you guys at some point here. Also, while I'm talking to the, or walking to the truck real quick, obviously you notice the back field has uh, more corn in it than the front field. Which doesn't make a lick of sense because the front field is the heavy ground, which you'd think heavy ground going to hold moisture longer. This hole from the waterway there, basically all this, like two thirds of the field, and then the back of the waterway that way kind of gets more clay in it. But this L, this L right here around the waterway is all sand. It's got some clay in it, but for the most part, it's sand, and it outperformed heavy ground on emergence it, it doesn't make any sense but then this isn't the only field i got that did it this year for some reason the sand or the sandier lighter ground the corn the corn came up better and their drought year doesn't make a lick of sense can't explain it like the field behind mom and dad's well i'll I'll show that to you on, in, a, in a later video because that field or that that boggles my mind how that what that field did too. But anyway, just something that I thought was odd was that the lighter ground performed better in a drought, which is completely counterintuitive. Okay, we're back. It never did calm down enough last while well, it. It finally calmed down enough about 8.30, at which point it was too late. Um, but it is just a little after 9 o'clock in the morning now. And while I was eating breakfast this morning, I was doing a bunch of reading about putting herbicide down when there's a dew on. And there are a few studies that are to the negative but for the most part the general consensus i found is late morning if there's a light dew on you're good basically as as long as it's the dew's not so heavy it's running off the plants like niagara falls you're fine and you don't really want to be spraying There are certain herbicides that don't care about spraying at night if the dew's on. But a lot of them have to be able to dry on the plant. So basically the, the general consensus as far as spraying in the evening is you want to quit like between 7 and 8 o'clock to give the herbicide enough time to dry before the dew sets on it because if the dew sets on it and keeps it wet then you're basically you basically just wasted it was the consensus that i found so in the morning when the dew's coming off as long as it's a light dew you can spray at night you want to quit before the dew sets that's basically what i found so i've never sprayed this early in the morning when the dew's on because I've always been kind of conservative about it, but I want to cover some ground today. So right now it's dead calm. Um, so I want to be able to get all the corn done today and hopefully get switched to beans and at least get a couple bean fields done, but we'll see because we got a lot of road running to do. So I got to go here, way the hell over there to finish the muck. And then come back, rinse the sprayer out, which that process takes about 45 minutes to an hour because I'm really, really anal about that. Because so far in my spraying career, I have never killed anything that I didn't intend to, and I want to keep it that way. So 
I'm very conservative about spraying in the wind. Probably way too conservative, but I'd rather be too conservative than not conservative enough and kill something that's not supposed to be killed. And I've never had residual tank mix kill anything. And I'd like to keep it that way, so I'm just really meticulous about how I clean the sprayer out. But anyhow so yeah i gotta drive all the way over there to get the muck back here to clear back to mom and dad's to clean the sprayer out refill and then drive clear the hell over there to start on beans and work my way back this way on beans so i probably got 20 miles of road running to do today ish but get this thing fired up and agitate for a little bit and we'll get rolling all right i've been agitating about 15 minutes that ought to be plenty for a 200 gallon tank so Okay, the backfield's done. Ran out of spraying ground right at the exact same time. That, worked, that always works out nice. So, we have to refill and we can get the front done.
right, there's 40 done. This front field probably should have been done about two weeks ago, but two weeks ago we were still waiting on rain and I didn't know if there's gonna be corn. And I still don't know if there's gonna be corn. Hopefully it comes up. Otherwise, now with that atrazine laid down on it, it's either gonna be corn or it's gonna be bare dirt because there ain't no coming back to replant beans anymore. So fingers crossed, here's hoping. But now I'm gonna fill back up. There's still some left. So I'm gonna throw about another 100 gallon in it. And we can go get the muck. And then corn will be done. Okay, we're down here. Just to show the different soil type makes, this got planted two days after my uncle's place. And you can see how much further along the corn is other than which is weird that it's because this is the wetter spot of the field and this is where it didn't come up yet i'd imagine it's going to be up here in a day or two yep they'll be we'll be filling in here today or so but just different soil type makes in hindsight, I wish I'd have planted it. I'd, I wish I'd have done a couple things different this year, but I guess I, a lot of guys are probably saying that right now. I almost wish I'd have planted this and my uncle's first. That way the good corn would have been on the big fields and all the smaller fields would have been the ones that, because then this would have looked like that, because that got planted, I think, like two or three weeks ahead of this. But, and then, I guess we'll find out when I get back there, but I think back there on the hill where the clay is, I'm assuming it's probably not up yet back there neither. But it's still some of the better looking corn.
there's nothing left in the tank. Oh well. I guess I won't worry about it then. I can pretty much guarantee I'm gonna have to make a second pass down here anyhow because that's just the way this ground lays, so if nothing else I'll get it then, but I guess if that's the case, I'll head back down or head back to mom and dad's and get everything moved back to the house and we'll get the sprayer cleaned out and see how long that takes and hopefully switch to beans. Okay now obviously switching the beans clean the sprayer out i already already dumped the little bit of solution that was left down in the sump and then we got to put a hundred gallon of water in the tank Before I do that, I think I'm gonna hang out there for a second. Bear with me here. some of this stuff this is just generic spray tank cleaner I've been told you can use bleach too but I've I just stick with the stuff that's actually made for cleaning spray tanks there's my line at oh yeah man One jar or one can is good for 200 gallon, 200 gallon tank. The bigger your tank is, the more of them you need. So, 200 gallon tank, one jar works kind of handy. And then we got a starter agitating. If it'll pick up prime. gonna be difficult uh, okay we're good on water come on prime up damn it Nice to use that thing for a hand washer, but um, 
I'm gonna let this thing sit up here and cook for a while. And with the time it is, I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to get any bean sprayed this afternoon. The wind's picking up anyhow, so. Nurse tanks could use some more water, so I'm gonna pull this down and start it filling and get my truck cleaned out while that's doing its thing. Okay, she's been agitating now for about 25-ish minutes. Should be plenty. It's going to continue to clean itself while it's oops, really hooked on here. It's going to continue to clean itself while we empty the booms out. Well, empty the tank out through the booms. this part just so it moves faster I crank the pressure way up and I usually won't run the entire tank through the boom just most of it that runs that tank cleaner down through and cleans all the nozzles out so you don't got to disassemble them and the more clean water you run through the more thorough it's going to be so now you just let it sit here and run again all right i ran eh, a little over 90 gallon through it that should be more than plenty. So the last thing I do... Is go through and open up all the valves. The pump, I just let it suck the rest of the water out. at this point all it is is just water there ain't nothing in it to be worried about and then the last thing I do is I pull the, uh, the strainer and clean it out and that'll basically That'll get it good enough to switch over, but what time is it? It's almost five o'clock, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it for today because by the time I get loaded up and get over, <laughs> it's off the 8700 obviously, but I wonder what it's from. Um, by the time I get bean stuff or bean herbicide around and get another tank in there's gonna be 20 30 minutes burn up and then 30 minute drive it's just it's not worth it i'll just hit it in the morning that way we're not pushing dark because i'd like to get this video up yet tonight so i guess that's it for this one and We'll catch you guys tomorrow morning spraying a little bit of beans or spraying a few acres of beans. There's not, I got one, two, three, four, no, one, two, three, four. I got five fields I'd like to hit tomorrow. So I'm not gonna get to all of them, but if I can get those done in the morning and then I got something I wanna do tomorrow afternoon, but we'll see how things turn out. So anyway, that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.